it's going to be a really fun time to go. Um, Valentine's recording, just for those folks who can't be here now, um, just so you know, uh, they are recording the session. So AWP, it's been going on every year since 1973. Um, it is a massive conference. Probably the biggest attendance I've ever seen was the year it was in New York City. And I think they broke the record at something like 15,000 people came and descended on New York City. And who are these people? These people are writer of, writers of all kinds of different stripes. I think when the MFA programs first started you know, to, to grow, that's probably also when AWP became even more massive because this is an opportunity for writing students and professors to convene in one place. And so AWP and the MFA programs have this like really kind of close relationship. And probably for those of you who are in an MFA program now or have been in one, the main the main reason to go is to see your people there. You know, once you graduate, this will be the place where you can reliably see people every year. Um, and it becomes, yeah, definitely this feeling of a, a reunion or a family get together of a kind. Um, I think we'll definitely, it will be about 10,000 people. I wouldn't be surprised if 10,000 people descend on Seattle um, this year. It can be pretty overwhelming. So the first time I went in 2008 or nine, I knew nothing about AWP. I just sort of washed up um, you know, on the AWP shores. I knew nothing. I don't even think I had really looked at the schedule. Um, I was really overwhelmed and honestly freaked out for a lot of the conference. And I think I, I sort of raced back eventually when I went back home, I just couldn't even make sense about what had happened to me. So I don't want you to have that experience if it is your first time. I am not inclined to prep a lot just in general in life, but I think spending a little time, even like an hour or two, thinking about what you're gonna do, um, just kind of getting your head in the game will serve you so well in this. So even if you're not usually somebody who plans a lot ahead, I think this is an occasion where, where you will want to. Um, so maybe you've been seeing uh, mentions of offsite events or panel discussions on social media. Uh, maybe you're already excited about some. Maybe you have absolutely no idea what's an offsite event anyway. Um, it, the buzz has sort of started on social media. The full schedule is up on the AWP website. And this is a good moment to start your prep. I think the best place to start is by finding your people. So at CCA, we've got a kind of crew going. <laughs> we've got about 10 people, we're all going together. Um, and one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure like I have everybody's contact. When I'm on, well, thank you, Taryn. Um, when I'm at AWP, I often totally disregard my social media. So if there's someone that I want, I really want to make sure, like I know Tara, I know I'm going to get to see Taryn um, or Kristen or any of you, I'm going to exchange my phone numbers because you do sort of enter this vortex and I don't have Facebook, you know, on my phone, for example. So if someone tried to reach me by Facebook, I wouldn't. And, um, and it's not to say you've got to reach out to everybody, but I think it helps so much emotionally, psychologically, if you know you have one or two people that are kind of be, kind of going to be like your, um, your, you know, your, your sort of go-to folks who you can always sort of reach out to them while you're at the conference um, and, and know that you reliably have their contact info. So that's what I would do. Um, other than people who are in the program, I'd be thinking more broadly. I'd be thinking about um, if you've ever been to a writing conference and you made a friend there, you'd be surprised so many people are going and this is your chance to see them again. So think about um, other uh, residencies you've attended, people who you've met maybe um, at conference, other kinds of conferences. Um, if you don't know, if you don't know people or you're not in, a, in an MFA program, I don't think that really, I don't, I don't even, I don't think that that's necessarily a problem because there is so much to be taking in that you might just want to go at your own pace and not feel like you have to, um, you know, sync up schedules, for example, you know, so I don't think it's, um, you know, it takes away from the experience. It's just going to be a different experience. I do think it will, in, for a lot of us, it'll make 
a difference to to know at least I have that one or two um, those one or two people that I can reach out to. So other people um, that you might meet um, or see, uh, we're going to be, of course, at CCA. We're sponsoring the con. We're one of the sp one of the sponsors of the conference, so we'll be at table nineteen forty. So if you ever need a friend or just need a sort of home base, it's good to know ahead of time that your program is going to have a table there. You know where you can definitely know you're going to find um, find some friendly faces. Um, I would also, I would think about ahead of time, if you are really keen to see protect, particular uh, writers or um, particular writers who you whose work you really admire, this is a great time to already be reaching out to them over social media. And it doesn't have to be icky or weird. It could just be, um, I'm really looking forward to your panel, right? Something, something super low key like that. It will make their day. I know it. Um, I know absolutely that it'll make their day, and it'll already, you know, give you something to look forward to. But what speakers are you going to go see? So, when I say like speakers, you're not certain. I go to the website that um, that Taryn just dropped in there. That's the AW website. The whole schedule is up there. I think more more kind of a little bit easier to handle is the AWP. Um, app. So there's an app that you can download and it will give you the full schedule. And if you're registered for the conference, you can also personalize it. So it'll give you an option for a um, the full schedule or your personalized schedule. So go ahead and download that. If you haven't, I guess, raise your hand. Does anyone downloaded it on all this year? Um, Kristen, how's the experience of it? Like, how are you finding it to navigate? It's not too hard to navigate. Um... I found it pretty easy to scroll through um, all the different panels that they have listed um, for each of the days. And then what you do is you sort of like check which ones you want to go to and it just compiles a list. Um, yeah. So you can see basically like your entire day planned out. Yeah, you can. So that's how I'd start is I start, I'd give myself an hour or two one night, you know, just sort of kick back and download the app, start to go through. You're going to get excited about a lot of things, which is good. <laughs> Um, so go ahead, and, you know, start filling up your schedule. Um, but you have to be realistic about your time because I would say if you're planning on attending more than two, three, I would say at most events a day, you're going to be exhausting and overwhelming yourself. Um, so I think you've got to be get excited and look at the ample offerings, um, but know that you're going to have to cull pretty radically when it comes down to it. Um, when you go on, I just pulled it up on my phone, and when you go on the website, you can also do, oh, gosh, it's probably, how do the YouTubers do this? Sorry, I failed at that. <laughs> um, but there's a filter on the schedule, so you can go full schedule filter, and then it'll give you the topic. So there, there are all kinds of events going on. There are agent marketing panels, there are author signings, there are pedagogy, so teaching um, discussions, um, there are genre specific events. And I'm looking even, you know, you can get it down to playwriting, nonfiction, and it will just filter out those topics or those genres that you're most interested in. And that could really help a lot. I remember Taryn um, last year, I think was Taryn's first time going to AWP. And since Taryn writes nonfiction, I just sort of went through real quickly and I wanted to see what, what offerings would be good for her since she might be interested in, in fiction. But my bet was that she'd be most keen on seeing authors in the genre she's writing in, right? So that'll save you some time. Um, I think that you, if you're not going in person, um, and this is for you, uh, Iman, is all the featured events, when you go on the AWP website and you see the featured events, all of those will be live streamed. And again, all of our CCA, current CCA folks, you have a current, um, subscription to AWP. So you'll be able to get on and log in and see those events live streamed. Um, not every event is going to be live streamed, but they're sort of their big marquee speakers will be live streamed from the conference. And Valentine was telling me that 
they already actually have some pre-recorded events. So to the extent you're interested in some of those topics, um, you might already go on and see what the offerings are. They're trying to make it appealing and accessible to people who can't be there, um, you know, to, to all the people who can't be there necessarily. So there are offerings, Iman, for you out there. And I think you should just go through the same process and see um, what most interests you keeping in mind that you're probably going to radically curtail those down um, as you get closer to the date. So what I would do, you know, if I were going to AWP for the first time, um, and, I'm no, and I know that probably I'm not going to be able to see or attend more than two or three formal events during each day, so it's four days, probably most people are flying out Wednesday and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday is really kind of a goodbye day. Um, things are really winding down. So the meat of the conference is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, if I were going for the first time to AWP, I would go in and I would. you could also on the app search for specific writers. So there might be a writer who I've never had a chance to see in person and I just sort of basically kill for it. Like I'd kill for the opportunity to see them in person. That is the kind of person that I would go see at AWP. Someone who maybe I'd have a chance to see in the Bay Area. I'm not gonna you know, spend this really sort of, these very few, um, you know, these, 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 this time at AWP is so condensed, so compressed that I'm really gonna seek out things that I can't get at home, so to speak, right? So this is when I'm gonna go see authors who, for, for reasons, um, you know, for various reasons, I've never gotten to chance see in person. Um, I think that that doesn't necessarily mean like mega superstars, though it could. This year, the headline speaker is Min Jin Lee, the author of um, Pachinko, so amazing writer. You know, you might see me fangirling around her, <laughs> but it could be like your personal superstar, right? Like somebody who's maybe not the biggest rock star and it will absolutely, you know, make their day for you to attend their panel and you could really cement and fortify a relationship like maybe somebody you've exchanged emails with or written or read their work showing up could be like that could be worth the whole conference right is just having that one um that one in-person exchange and it doesn't have to be a superstar um the other way that i would um sorry someone's I thought that was someone knocking on the door, so to speak, but I'll just keep going. Um, the, other, the other way that I would begin to prioritize what I'm gonna do is I would um, pick a theme for the year. So I've been to 10 AWPs at different moments in my writing life. I've had really different priorities. Um, in the beginning, it was just like getting the lay of the land, you know, so maybe that's your theme is I just want to see what the world of writers is like, like what's the scene out there, and maybe you're a little bit looser about things. Maybe you're at the point where um, Jessamine, one of our, um, our alums, um, has her book coming out soon, and maybe she's really keen to um, her theme of the year is on making connections with um, you know, publishers or, or, um, or what am I thinking, like different venues, literary organizations where she might go and um, do readings, that sort of thing, right? So she could have a whole different set of priorities and her AWP is not going to resemble, um, you know, Jess's AWP, let's say, who Jess might be really focused on. I want to see, um, I, this is my year for meeting some um, some of the poets that whose work I've really loved, right? So thinking about a theme or some or overarching goal you have for yourself that really hits you, hits where you are in your writing life can help streamline things a lot. Um, there are, like I said, you can focus on publishing or you can focus on pedagogy because I teach, that's probably where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in the panels for teaching. You know, um, that's probably where I'm going to spend most of my time. Think about what you want to get out of the conference and put those glasses on and choose your events accordingly. Um, I would then, so I'm thinking, I'm going through the schedule on the, the app. Um, I would set my absolutely non-negotiable 
I have to go or I'll regret it all my life. Those are the things I would set into place. And I would be absolutely useless and get it down to maybe just the two or three a day. Um, then I would start to think about um, prepping in other ways. So this is this is a little bit, um, you know, this, this might make you laugh a little bit, but believe me, it makes such a difference to pack the right things when you go to going to AWP. So you spent your time kind of scoping out the schedule and now you're thinking more in practical terms. I would definitely bring some business cards. I don't think they have to be fancy. You can get them super cheap. All you got to do is have your name and like writer on it and your social media and you know whatever email you want to put on there. I think it helps a lot to have that in hand um, because you will meet people and you will you know, you will want something to give um, to a, a new friend or a, a literary journal, an editor who you might meet there. Um, it's worth the time and the expense, a little bit of expense it is. And um, another thing I would do is definitely take a suitcase because you come back. Another thing about AWP is you take, you come back with lots of books and magazines and like all of this, what is it called? It's like sort of like this, um, this swag that you come back with. So I would actually take a suitcase because you're probably going to come back with a lot of, a lot more than you thought you did, books that you pick up. Um, a tip, by the way, is that almost all the presses and the literary journals on the last day, on Sunday, they start to pretty much give it away for free. You know? So they'll heavily discount their books and, and all of that. So it's a nice chance if you're curious about literary magazines and they might you know, it can get pretty pricey to to um, to subscribe to these. It, AWP is a great place to pick up some literary magazine that, and you'll want somewhere to put them. Um, I would definitely take a charger. I mean, you are, you're pretty much on an island. You're in a big conference hall and it is not, um, it's not gonna be easy to get back to your hotel. So I think taking a charger with you is super important. Hand sanitizer is really important. Um, I would take, it's very expensive, the conference food, super expensive. Um, I would take um, just little little snacks and things like that will save you so much money when you're there. Um, I think you gotta be comfortable and I think you gotta have like a little backpack or something to keep it, hold it all together and hold that swag on the daily. I'm also personally, I'm, I'm also partial to taking a little notebook where I can scribble down. Um, I can scribble down like names of people I've met, just like at the end of the day, what I often will do is I'll just sit down and I'll think about the people I met and maybe I've got my business card and I'll just sort of like make notes for myself in a notebook. And I like to do, do it in a notebook instead of the phone, um, just because it helps, me, it helps me be more present at the conference. So I think a little notebook, something like that can be really practical and handy for you. Um, so that's kind of as practical as I'm going to get, but I would be remiss not to, um, not to mention this. It's a great idea also to think about maybe one or two things you might want to do in Seattle. So I've been to Seattle a few times, um, but there, I haven't seen everything and there's lots, um, that, you know, probably within the scope of the conference I can't do, but just maybe thinking of one or two things because there will come a moment, everybody who's been at AWP knows this, where you will want to flee the conference <laughs> when you will absolutely need, Kristen, am I right here? Um, you will absolutely want to run away and be by yourself or I don't know, with your just, just with your best friend, you will want to get yourself away from this super intense experience of being surrounded by all of these, you know, lots of fantastic folks, but for most of us introverts, it can be so intense. So thinking ahead of time about, um, you know, maybe a coffee shop or a restaurant or something that can be your escape hatch <laughs> um, is wonderful. And I've got this, um, I can put this in the chat, is um, there's a wonderful series that Poets and Writers does um, it's guides to cities. Um, all you know, uh, they've got several of them. They have one for the Bay Area, and I'm going to put in the chat um, the one that they have for Seattle. And it's sort of like a book lovers. Um, it's a book lovers sort of guide to Seattle. And if you're thinking about, you know, thinking about what you might want to see in Seattle, this is a really fun um, kind of way to familiarize yourself with what is there. Um, 
let's see. And be sure, please, think, if you have questions, jot them down because I want to be able to answer answer them later when I'm done through getting through this. Um, all right. If you hate networking, as most of us do, you got to get over it to a certain extent um, because the point of this is to interact with people. So Taryn is laughing. <laughs> it's like, I remember when I first started going to conferences, it was like, oh my God, my people, right? Because when you're a writer, you're probably, you're often like a kind of bookish solitary person and you don't get on that well with most people. And then suddenly there you are, <laughs> you know, it, and it, oh, just surrounded by writers and it can be pretty glorious and it can also just be horrifying in its own way, right? So a few places to escape to, but then just thinking a little bit about this being your opportunity. This is a this is a time. This is a place where you can begin to make friendships or connections um, with people who might ten years from now wind up being really important to your life as a writer. You know, um, it is an incredible place to nourish your career and uh, and begin to nourish friendships with other writers. I think if you go to AWP thinking like, this is where I'm gonna go to get a book contract or that, you know, I don't, I know that happens every once in a while, but I think it's often the more, you know, casual um, little moments, the conversation you strike up with somebody at a panel, you know, or in the line to get coffee in the morning. Um, a lot of times that's the best that comes out of this this conference are these little moments and they can really become something later if you go with the right mindset into this. Um, if you only talk to one person during a conference, and I think your MFA writing people don't count, um, though you can all come talk to me, I'll be at booth 1940 with Valentine. <laughs> but I think challenge yourself a little bit and say, you know, today I'm just going to talk to one person or I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to have this like this moment, this exchange, and that's enough. It doesn't have to be this, you know, frantic, frenzied opportunity, you know, kind of collecting of the business cards. Um, nobody wants that anyway. I think it's good if you're an introvert to have a couple questions in mind. I don't like people to ask me what I'm writing because I go blank and I get frozen and I totally freak out. So I don't think that's the best question to ask um, in, um, in these moments when you're in a panel discussion or in line for coffee. Um, some people love it, but I think it's good to have, to prep a few chat points or talking points um, that aren't about people's work. And it could just be, what's a, you know, what's a, what's a event or a, a panel that you went to that you really liked so far, or, um, you know, what are you looking forward to at the conference? Something like that. And you might, I can't even see your faces, but I think you might think that's so basic. <laughs> it's so fundamental but I am supremely shy. You, you might not know it. And it really helps me to just think ahead of time of just a few things um, that I might go to when I'm first meeting a stranger, someone I don't know. Um, assume nothing. There's a lot of, there is a little bit of like posturing and like a feeling like here's that superstar writer, this superstar writer. Um, but I would go with the attitude of, you just never know. I think you should be nice. To, that's just good advice anyway, is to be nice to everyone anyway. Um, but I think that there can be this sort of jockeying, like I'm going to talk to these this really important, you know, editor at this magazine or this. And, um, and I think it just reads false. And I think often, again, like the best things happen in this more, um, just in this more friendly exchange without a feeling of what am I going to get out of this? Um, do ask for cards, do ask for people's emails. If you like them well enough, keep that in your little notebook. Um, at nighttime, a thing I do when I go to AWP is I might look up somebody I met I'm, I met, and I will find that maybe there were other points of connection that we didn't realize in that moment, but oh, we both went to Bennington together. That's where I got my MFA. So I might you know, then send that person a message and say, hey, are you gonna go to the Bennington offsite, you know, this or that? Um, so this is the use to which you put all those notes and the, the business cards. You can start on the ground right there at AWP cultivating these relationships. Um, 
I, I would recommend sitting in the front at panels that you really do want to go to. I think then you're more you're more apt to really be present in that moment. Um, and already because I know if I'm an event, it's somewhere I really want to be. Um, I'm probably going to go want to say hi to somebody or I'm telling you, I'm going to fangirl a little with some people. And so I'm going to take books, um, you know, not a lot, but like a couple of writers whose work I really love, I'll take a copy of their book and I'll go say hi. And it doesn't have to be a lot of words, but just a thank you and something specific you loved about the book. You hold the book up to the person, they sign it. You're, <laughs> you're on your way to an actual connection with a writer um, whose work you love. That's like magic. Um, and don't be shy. I think you'd really be surprised. People think that they're bothering, you know, that, that they're bothering a famous somebody or another, but you will honestly make their day if you go with your with a book um, and uh, and you ask for them to sign it. There's really nothing more special as a writer. I can tell you that from my own experience. Um, that's sort of like what we live for. All right, um, nearly done. I'm probably you know ten minutes away from done. Um, you've made your schedule. You, you're cruising through your day. You're you're making contacts there will come a moment where you realize you have done nothing that you plan to do like absolutely nothing you miss that first panel you know and um and you are you know you're too exhausted now you've been tramping through the book fair and you haven't um done this other thing and it's totally okay and in fact i think you're doing awp right if you get there even with the best schedule and you find yourself going with the flow of things, you're having an amazing AWP experience, honestly. Um, I would not feel bad about that at all. Um, I think absolutely, I know the best things that have happened to me at AWP have been those moments where like I see a former grad school professor, you know, and they ask me to come to this or that thing. And I feel myself sort of moving, um, you know, with a friend through this and it's, much better than anything I could have scheduled for myself. So be open-minded about that. Don't feel, don't feel you failed if you aren't checking off every single thing you planned. Um, I mentioned the book fair, I think I did. This is probably the crown jewel. So I would probably be, um, you know, I, I'd be thinking that I'm gonna spend some part of every day at the book fair. If you haven't been to AWP, just super briefly, it is a massive room with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tables. And who are, who are these tables? Um, and who is sitting at these tables? It's MFA programs, it's literary magazines, it's small presses, big presses don't go to AWP. Um, but the smaller ones do, and they will have tables. It will be conferences it will be places like Kabe Kanam it will be um it will be literary organizations of different kinds so it's a real smorgasbord there's a lot happening there and you have got to pace yourself I think um it is well worth your time there but it is quite fatiguing so spending a couple hours over the course of three days is probably better than lots and lots of time there um there are um, kind of different attitudes about how you approach the book fair. You could just go sort of, you know, ambling through. You could find a few home bases. So like our table might be a home base for you. You know, either Valentine or I are gonna be sitting there at booth 1940. Um, and maybe there's a literary journal um, that you've worked with in the past and maybe that's like, you know, you have a purpose when you walk into that big room, you know, you'll know at least one or two people at one or two booths, you know, that can be really kind of grounding and, and helpful when you're in this massive um, convention hall. I would definitely go to the tables of any literary journals who'd published my work. Now, when you go to one of these tables, you're not necessarily going to meet the editor, like the top, top, top editor. So it, it might be, um, you know, it might, it might be somebody who is sort of like, you know, somebody who is um, interning there, some, or if it's an MFA table, a student. So it's not necessarily going to be the director of the program or the, the editor of the, of the paper, but it's a great 
moment to actually put a face to the publication or the organization or whatnot. Um, and you could ask, I, you know, I would have modest expectations around this sort of thing, but you might ask at a literary journal table, what kind of submissions are you looking for? Or, you know, what's the kind of um, work that seems to be like really registering with your agents? You could gather a little bit of intel or intelligence around that. But again, I think modest expectations. Um, it's really gonna be more like getting to see that the literary journals, a lot of us, again, we can't afford to subscribe to all of these. So this is your chance to just actually pick up the journal, thumb through it, have a little bit of an exchange with the person um, and get a better read on the literary journal if that's what the table's for. Um, and then you keep moving, you keep going. Um, you might uh, you might have um, already in mind a few of the signature or the headlining events that you absolutely want to go to. And I would never tell you not to go to those. But if I was going to tell you of all the things I would, I would think of as lesser priorities at AWP, I think those mega headliner events are probably what I would skip. And what am I doing instead? I think I'm going to the on offsite events. So this is a whole world onto itself. Um, it is, these are readings and um, get togethers that are, will be held around all around the city of Seattle. So it won't be in the convention hall. And the way that you find out about these is you can search by hashtag AWP23. Um, and there's also a place on the AWP website where you can um, and where you can look at the offsite events as well. And I think a lot of people, I mean, Faith might agree, um, and I'll, I'll ask in a couple of minutes, but I think for a lot of people, these are even better than the scheduled events that happen during the day. So this is where, for example, I went to Bennington, Bennington will have an offsite event. They'll probably have free drinks or some appetizers or something. So it'll be like a little bit, Faith is, <laughs> putting her thumb up. Um, so it'll be just a sort of like little private party that'll have a different feel from what's happening in the big conference, right? Um, and we're going to have one, by the way, for CCA on Thursday night. We'll um, have a little happy hour moment and, you know, you can come like have a drink. But these are really, they're really fun and energetic and they have a different vibe and they're so worth your time to check them out. Um, let's see. I'm nearly, nearly done here. Um, okay. Now, there's a lot, hopefully, that you're going to ask me more questions or details about the conference itself, but if you can at all, I would try not to schedule anything major from when you, for when you come back, because you're probably going to be wrecked. <laughs> I don't know what your stamina for this sort of thing is, but I come back. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. Like I'm pretty much asleep for 24 hours. I mean, my family now knows like, oh my God, she's coming back. Like stay out of her way because I'm kind of toxic. I have had like a year's worth of um, social intercourse and I am really needing to retreat afterwards. So just a heads up, you, that might be you, you know? And so I think if you can, like give yourself a little bit of cushion when you come back, at least warn your family or your, you know, partner or your roommates <laughs> that, that you might need a little bit of space afterwards. Um, I usually wait a little bit to follow up with people um, because I know everybody comes back so tired. I'm not necessarily gonna follow up with people I met like in that moment, but in the next week or two, you can bet like that is the time where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna go up, go and make sure like I'm following people or I send somebody a message. And the more, the more detailed you can be, um, the more meaningful that sort of thing is. And this is the way you build a career, honest to God, like years and years of this, of these little moments and these little follow-ups, so much better to build it up like this than to find yourself on the eve of your first book's publication, looking for people to support you, right? So go, go into this with that sort of, you know, feeling of I'm building my career, but it's going to, I'm going to do it in a way that's spontaneous. It feels natural. It feels good. Um, and it feels like this is part of the life I want, right? Um, ideally, that's what you come away with. So 
Another thing, just uh, ending my formal part of this is um, right after AWP, a couple of weeks after is when they begin to solicit, um, they begin to solicit proposals for the coming year. It's going to be in Kansas City, Missouri next year. So already, you know, just a couple of weeks after AWP ends, people start to plan. I don't know what faith is like. Is it the Kansas City? <laughs> faith is reacting. Yes. I'm like, what the what? <laughs> what? Yeah. So oh, I'm telling see. you, this is a good year to go. It's close for us to go to Seattle. Next year is in Kansas City. And AWP always, um, it sort of hopscotches. It goes from West Coast to Midwest to East Coast. So next year is the Midwest year, I think. And then it'll be East Coast. Um, and I always know at least, you know, every three years, I know it's going to be somewhere on the West Coast. And I always go those years, you know, especially if you're, you know, you don't have the resources to go each year. Um, you know, you can rely on the fact that um, it'll be coming back round to your, you know, broadly to your geographic area in three years time. Um, so yeah, it's a good time when you come back to, to figure out how much money did I spend, um, you know, start to budget for next year because it's not a small expense and parsing it out, you know, over the course of the year will be super helpful to you. Um, so that's another thing I would do is to think about, um, to think about the next year's conference and and how you can already start to lay some groundwork and get your get yourself rolling toward that event. So give me your questions. I want them all. <laughs> Small, big, freaking out, you know, excited. Let me know. Faith really has fear of missing out. Um, and you could ask in the chat or you could also ask by raising your hand like Anne is raising. Um, thank you. So I'm um, from the class of 2007. Hi. Thanks for, for organizing it. And I'm in Atlanta. I'm out of town for, for this year's and I've never been. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited to hear about it. My question is, do you think it's worth it to do the, the virtual package, even though I know that I couldn't do it like at the right time, it would have to be like rewatching it later. Is that something to be worth it or just wait and plan ahead for the 2024 when I could go in person? And because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite of you. I'm an in-person person. Like I like people. So, <laughs> so all of this sounds like really exciting to me and I don't like sitting behind the screen. Yeah. 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 Um, but like you said, building, building your career and your network, I didn't know if you thought it was worth it to do the virtual part or the, I mean, I think it can be, and you know, it, it depends also, I don't know how much are they asking for the virtual registration? Do you know? That's under a hundred dollars, I think. But I mean, it's only going to be certain sessions probably. I didn't look into the details of if you have to watch it simultaneously. Um, yeah. I'm assuming they would give the recordings because most conferences do, but I'd have to look into it a little more. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I know I always, I get excited about things that are happening virtually, but unless I really make a concerted efforts, I tend to blow it off at the last minute, you know? Yeah. Um, so maybe just being realistic. I think when it has worked for me is when I almost like make an event of it. So um, for Iman, who, I don't know if she's still online, but um, you know, I would, I would almost like you know, look at my schedule and schedule it and try to make it fun for myself. Like, know that I'm going to have time, like bracket that those hours during the day and, you know, have your, your snacks or whatever, and just try to get as into it as you can. Um, if it's recorded for me, it's harder to feel that excitement, <laughs> even, even if it's um, live, but online, li the liveness helps, right? So if you could, if you have the ability, if you have the time to watch it when it's actually happening, I think it could be fun. You know, there's a way you could get yourself excited about it and you can do all the things that I'm telling you to do about like following up with people and, you know, complimenting them on what they said on the panel and, you know, that sort of right. thing. I think you could get some practice doing that or, you know, do, right. do a bit of that even from afar. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Not everybody at once. 
Tara and Shelby, you know, I'm going to pluck you out of the audience. I'm going to say, um, what do you wish you know that, that you didn't your first time around? So Taryn went for the first time last year. I think that, well, I am a really big Excel spreadsheet organizer type of person. So yeah. I have everything really rigidly planned out. And like you've been saying, um, it didn't really work out that way because even when panels are not at the same time, be, just being back to back and having to run through this massive conference center doesn't always give you enough time to get to the panel in time. Mm -hmm. um, so I missed some of the ones that like, like the first chunk of it, because I had to just navigate this huge conference hall with escalators and different floors and just like tons of rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and I also went to panels that I was really interested in the subject, but they weren't always that great. I found that the ones that had authors that I was really interested in did not disappoint. So I'm kind of this year trying to take with a grain of salt um, the topics that I'm most interested in as being the thing that leads me to the panel. Um, and I'm also trying to be realistic about how many panels I can even go to before getting completely exhausted. And the, the conference was in Philly last year and I convinced um, David and Rita last year to go to Baltimore with me for the day. <laughs> Um, so I really wanted to get away, like several <laughs> <laughs> all the way to another city. To, yeah, to, yeah, over different states. Yeah, we had a really great time. Um, it was a nice break. We um, we had gone out, I think, on a Sunday when it was kind of dying down, anyways. But um, yeah, the book fair was probably the most exhausting because there's so many booths, and I wanted to see. I literally went to every single one, mm -hmm. and talking to each person. Um, saying the same thing over and over again can be a little bit draining. Mm -hmm. um, and also like the guilt of not buying an author's book who's sitting right there asking you to buy their book, come up with some kind of excuse beforehand, like a canned excuse, because I bought so many books that David, my friend had to take a bunch of them home for me because my suitcase couldn't fit them. Um, I still haven't gotten through that reading pile yet but um yeah just finding kind ways to politely decline every single book that gets proposed because <laughs> you can't buy them all <laughs> yeah I I actually really don't buy any books when I go it would really have to be you know my current mega crush writer you know whose who's book I would purchase um I might recommend that maybe you do your shopping on the last day or right I mean so you just really know by that time like what there is and 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 what you want um and that might cut down a bit of of the spending right because it can really it can add up a lot um yeah all of that was so great though Tara <laughs> and I think the the sort of um I think it probably for somebody like who really loves to plan like you, it can be frustrating because you've got your spreadsheet, everything's like lined up and then um, physically it can be hard to get from place to place, like from one conference, one room to the next, it might even be in another building. And that's not even speaking of the offsite events, which could be anywhere in Seattle, right? Other thing. You're basically doing it all day and then all night, not really being familiar with where you are, where you're going. But once you get there, it's worth it. Yeah, and I think it's also okay. There's probably, there's always a night where I just don't do anything, right? Yeah. Um, and I think everybody has that moment or like that afternoon, or there's always this sort of a moment where you just need to gather your resources back. Anyone else has got questions? Yeah, Lisa. Hi, and uh, thank you so much for your presentation, Jasmine, for your talk. It was so comprehensive. And I believe that um, you came to San Jose State when I was getting my MFA, and you did a really wonderful reading. So thank you for that. Oh, good. Thank um, you. Yeah, years ago. <laughs> um, so I'm. this will be my third and my first time volunteering. So I'll be handing out tote bags to you, to people on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I'm hoping to meet some university presses and interest them in a bio, a biography that I'm writing. Um, so, but again, I get intimidated at the table. I don't think they want people to shove things in their faces. And so I guess my question is like, um, which you sort of partially answered, uh, like, um, how would I get started possibly having a conversation with them? And then do you think I shouldn't leave anything with them, but in fact, ask for their cards? Is that a better way to go about it? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's my question. And then before you answer that, I just want to also say a water bottle, a refillable <laughs> water bottle and aspirin or Tylenol yeah. and your mask will be super helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah. Great tip. Take all of those things. Um, I mean, this is tricky because there they all are, Lisa, right? These presses. And again, it's going to be the smaller presses. Like, you know, Random House doesn't go, the, you know, the, the big five don't go, but amazing presses like Grey Wolf will be there or Copper Canyon, you know, will be there. You just, I think you just don't know who's sitting at the, the table. It could, it could, it could be anyone from an intern to a, like an acquiring editor. Um, and so that's why I think you have to be somewhat modest and realistic about what could happen there. Um, you might want to come up with a list of maybe like five presses you're really interested in, do some homework and spend more time at fewer places. Just start chatting someone up, you know, gauge, gauge, you know, their involvement with the press. Um, you could get you could get information, but not necessarily a name in that moment. Um, if Faith is online, I, Faith, do you have? Um, you don't have to come on, on off on camera, but I just wonder about this, like handing a manuscript, or would you do something like that, Faith, or anybody who maybe has experience in this? Um, I have heard that people do this sometimes, and it can be successful. But I'm just wondering if you know about like actually passing like a proposal or a manuscript. I, I, I don't know about it. I feel like people would just have so much already. There's so much overwhelm. It will get kind of lost in the sea. It's like always better to give them something that they can open up from whatever, you know, the laptop, the phone or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd Thank probably you. get a name, that. Lisa. I'd probably get like a name or a card or you know whatever yeah. whatever they have out on the table, and then I would do some strenuous following up later. That sounds great, and and yeah, it's um, I just love the AWP, and that that book thing is it's the size of a football field. It's really <laughs> insane, and I hope to get at least ten free pens out of this. So thank you. I mean, there's always like printing out a few pages and handing it to someone. That's like a lot less of a commitment than handing them a giant thing. You know, it's like, oh, well, here's a few pages. If you get a chance to read it on your way home or whatever on the bus or whatever. Yeah, I was actually thinking of a one page pitch sheet. Yeah. Yeah. That's super solid, I think. Yeah. I, at least I would have this stuff with you, you know, because who knows, maybe you just really hit it off. You have a great conversation and it happens to be, you know, somebody who's really keen on the concept and you want to have the one page, you know, one page or maybe even a proposal or, you know, something, something there for sure. Bring stuff, right. Um, just maybe play it by ear on how much you're going to give out or don't lead with it. Don't lead with this. Jess, do you have a question? You came on, I got so excited to see you. <laughs> um, I was just, um, I was thinking about that too, that same question, because I have these little, I have some little chat books that I could give out, but um, I would want to, you know, do it appropriately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And not give out too many, especially if they're probably not going to get read because they cost money to make. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't give them out indiscriminately, Jess, like I would, you know, and it might be that it's not a press, but like you meet someone and it just like, it just happens to be that this person has some amazing connection to a topic that you're interested in or, or something. And, um, and so it might, it might be just a person you meet, not, not necessarily at a table there. Um, 
yeah, I would be conservative in how many I give out and, and, and really make sure like I'm giving it to someone who seems receptive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is CCA, um, Taryn, did you ask um, selling books? No. <laughs> I'm giving out free pens because Lisa needs at least one. I, I, Lisa, I have a pen for you. I can, I'll give you a pen. So I'll have that. And we'll have, we have actually beautiful tote bags. So if nothing else, come to me and I'll give you a tote bag. I'll um, be there. <laughs> the most beautiful of all tote bags will be CCA MFA's tote bags. Um, and are we selling, I don't think of it as an opportunity to sell my books. Like, I mean, if I was an author, I, if I was just going on my own, I wouldn't even take my books um, with me. I would, um, the only books I'm taking to our table will be to display for prospective students to just grab and to get a sense of like who we are, but I'm not gonna sell any books. I'm I actually feel, I, the years before I have a book and Jasmine has a book coming out um, soon is I feel a lot of pressure like that year that I have a book coming out and thankfully right now I'm between books and I really don't care. Like I don't, <laughs> I just am going and I wanna see people that I like and have fun. And I'm not concerned with selling myself or my books or my like anything. So it's a fun year for me. Jasmine, are you feeling like pressure? Yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah, the pressure is is definitely there. <laughs> and I will have like there's a small chance that I will have the finished copies like the early, like the release date is not till April 18th, but um my publisher is going to send them as soon as they're done so there's a small chance i could have them at the conference and it's been interesting just hearing what everyone's saying um mm -hmm. because i do i will definitely i think taking a few copies just to the festival at, or the conference yeah. um in case uh in case you do happen to meet someone who's really interested in what you're doing and it could be a great connection and you're like oh here just like you can look at my book or mm -hmm you know, and not like force it on anyone, but because mm -hmm. everyone's going to have their hands full, I know, but like, yeah, I definitely am trying to take all the panels about book publicity and stuff like right, that. Right. And I did have an agent when I sold this book, but then she quit the business. So mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm like, kind of in an interesting seat where I'm like looking for a new agent because obviously I have other books and I hope to like springboard but um, I'm just not sure about like, cause it feels like agents are just, they must be in so deep incognito at these um, conferences because they're like the people that everyone's kind of hounding. I feel like everyone's looking around, like who's the agent maybe, I don't know. No, at AWP, I don't think they're agents. I mean, if they're there, there are very few of them. Gotcha. So there's some, some conferences like um, San Francisco Writers Conference or even um, Community of Writers, the Writers Conference, where there are agents there and they, you know, are there very much to do business, right? Um, right. And that can be kind of scary and people get intimidated about approaching them because, you know, they're agents. But AWP really doesn't have that aspect to it. If they're there, it's, you know, maybe, maybe like their client is like a, on a featured speaker or something like that, or they're friends with a writer who's there or something like that. So I would not be feeling stressed out about agents or the possibility of, it would be a very uncommon thing. Um, I hope that. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Worry about at this particular conference. Um, and there might be some panels, Jasmine, I'm just thinking like there might be specific ones about like where agents are appearing. Yeah. But it's going to be a pretty um, minimal part of the whole experience, right? At the San Francisco Writers Conference, they actually have sort of like speed dating with an agent. It's it's like central to the experience that they're offering that you're meeting. So it's not that kind of experience. Um, I don't know, for whatever it's worth, Jasmine, like what I would be, like something I might be specifically looking for are um places that might review my book that would yeah. be the kind of thing that I'd be interested in with journals coming out yeah a journal um I would be looking at maybe like some literary festivals and seeing 
places where they have authors come speak, like if, I don't know if Litquake will be there, but you know, it might be an opportunity if you're interested in like in reading or being part of these um, literary festivals, it could be really yeah. good for that to get on their schedules. Um, That's a really good thought. Yeah. Another thing that I think is really good to look out for are um, residencies and conferences. They'll have tables too. So, you know, if you're looking for some, <laughs> this is the subject, nice segue <laughs> for Faith Talk next week. Um, <laughs> But for sure, there'll be there'll be some tables dedicated to organizations that offer residencies and and so forth. Is that right, Faith? That you remember about AWP? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, any other? Maybe just one like last question, or you know, you can always ask me later by by just emailing me something. Well, I like I like Kristen's question too because I am also looking for work in the field. She she said, "Is it ever okay to approach a small press and ask if they're looking for readers or proofreaders, editors, what have you?" Yes. <laughs> My only <laughs> one word answer of the night. Um, yes, yes, I think it is. Um, I think that journals are they depend so much on that work, you know? And so I think they'd actually be really thrilled um, to be asked, are you looking for readers? You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get something on the spot, but um, it's always better to have, it's always better to approach a literary magazine with a name or some kind of con, you know, just a context. Like I met you at AWP or had, you know, that's any little thing like that is going to, um, give you a much better chance of actually being considered. So I would seize it for sure. Okay, so we're at seven o'clock, it's actually 701. Um, if you have other questions, you can always, always email me and anyone that was sharing offer, wait, sorry, what's Taryn offering? Uh, anyone who wants it. This is a great idea. They have a Discord channel um, and alumni who are on, you know, maybe you want to jump on that. Our current students have a Discord that's dedicated to AWP. MVP as always. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, I'm going to be there the whole four days. Valentine's going to be there flying up on Wednesday. And, um, you know, we're, we're like your home base at all times. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm really thrilled that we get to take you up or we get to be with you. This is the first year that so many are coming up. So it's going to be super fun. Jessamine, you better come and look for me. Oh, I'll definitely come say hi. For <laughs> okay. 500%. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So thanks everybody for being on and follow up with me. If I didn't answer your question, um, thanks for being on and come see Faith next week. She's going to teach you everything about residencies. What's our booth number again? 1940. This is amazing. Thanks, Jasmine. Okay. Thank you so much, Taryn. Thanks, everybody, for being on. I'll Thank see you, Jasmine. Bye-bye.